Because the lie is the language of life, and it is, shouldn't be the language of your own internal dialogue. Uh, honesty with self is probably preferable to lying, but as far as the world is concerned, then the lie is the language that is most productive. You don't have to look very far to see that the people who do rather well the people who lie and cheat, but I'm not going to harp on about that in this particular podcast. And what I want to talk about is essentially the mathematics of lying. You would expect that if uh, lying is so pervasive, and it's per- pervasive in the animal kingdom as well as in the human life, uh, that somebody might have developed some mathematics around it, and indeed they did. Uh, a character called John von Neumann and also with help from Oscar Morgenstern created something in the 1950s called Game Theory. They should have called it Lying Theory but I suppose it might have been less acceptable. Anyway, there's a very very good book called The Strategy of Conflict by a guy called Thomas Schelling. The book is mainly about the Cold War and how Game Theory was used in Cold War, but it's also about other things. And um, there's a wonderful bit at the front of the book, and I'll read it, it's only two or three sentences. It says, among diverse theories of conflict, corresponding to the diverse meanings of the word conflict, a main dividing line is between those who treat conflict as a pathological state. Most of us think that conflict is unusual. Conflict is the stuff of life, and in conflict people will lie to try and maximize their own um, advantage. So there are those who treat conflict as a pathological state, which is idiotic. Conflict is normal. So those who treat conflict as a pathological state and seek its causes and treatment and those who take conflict for granted and study the behavior associated with it. Or that latter one, those who take conflict for granted and study the behavior associated with it, are people who study game theory. They just assume that everybody's going to lie and cheat and try and maximize their own position. And (coughs) game theory is very widely used in commerce. Um, It's used, for example, in the OPEC negotiations the oil oil producers club, the likes of Saudi and Venezuela and Russia and whoever else that produces oil. And they try to set a price for oil. And the problem is that if they set a price that, you know, sort of meets the um, needs of one country, it may not meet the needs of another one. And so there's there's a possibility that each member might cheat. So if they agree to lower the price of oil in the hope of pushing the price up everybody might agree to lower the price and they might sorry the production and they might actually honor that but there might be one country that thinks oh well while the price is high I'm going to produce more behind the back of these guys so game theory is used in that situation assuming that all the members may lie you know, so what's the best solution to that and game theory is used. In fact, there are two or three central concepts in game theory. Um, the basic variables you work with are that each player has a set of strategies to lie, not to lie, to collaborate with somebody else behind everybody else's back, whatever those strategies are. You know, and generally speaking, most of them will involve lying to some extent. And then there are the outcomes that each person expects. If they go along with their strategy, then what payoff do they expect if everybody else goes along with their strategy? But if the others change their strategy, what payoff can they expect then? So it's it all gets, you know, as you can see, quite difficult. And then there are rules in the game. And so you have contract law and all that kind of thing to make sure that people have to 
um, obey the rules or they are penalised to an extent where it isn't worth them taking the risk. Because, yeah, I certainly know of businesses that just have openly flouted the law because the the gain that they um, that they made from flouting the law was well beyond any um, punishment that might be meted out upon them. So, yeah, they might make fifty million pounds for a few days by just deliberately ignoring the law, and then they're fined what you know five hundred k or something. Well, yeah, they're going to break the law. It's obvious. So the reason that I'm particularly interested in uh, game theory is because what most people don't know, I don't think, is that game theory these days comes under the umbrella of artificial intelligence. And there is this idea that uh, robots will be honest. Robots are driven by logic and that they will be honest. Well, that's an illusion you can sort of flush out of your mind immediately because robots are being programmed with game theory. How to lie and cheat beyond the imagination of human beings. <laughs> to lie and cheat with such effectiveness that a human being would always lose out. So the idea that AIs uh, robots of various kinds or um, programs that might run on commercial websites that those robots are going to be honest because they're robots and not human beings who lie anyway is totally misplaced. <coughs> you know there are a number of uh, well-known problems in game theory. You may have heard of something called the prisoner, prisoner's dilemma it's a situation where two people are caught and are suspected of committing a crime and each person is offered a reduced sentence if they cooperate with the police. But what it means of course is if they cooperate and say well you know that other guy did it my partner actually did the crime if they say that they get a reduced sentence but their partner then gets an increased sentence so you can imagine two people in that situation and the police use this, they use it every day. You know, two guys who they suspect of, or maybe more than two, that they suspect of having committed a crime. And they will say to them, if you cooperate with us, your sentence will be reduced. But the sentence of those people that have carried the crime out with you will be increased. What happens? Well, the police only use it because people have a tendency to um, cooperate with the police and because both people, or if it's more than two, maybe three, four people, because they all think, well, you know, my mate's going to um, squeal on me, so I'm going to squeal on him. Because, of course, these people can't communicate with each other. So what happens is that all the people saying, yeah, my mate did it, and because of that they all end up with longer prison sentences, which is exactly what the police want. So game theory is used every day in many situations that you don't suspect. Um, the situation in North Korea, game theory will be used to try and analyse that situation. You know, they've got a nutty person in North Korea and they will be trying to figure out what his strategies are and what their strategies are and how they match up and you've probably or possibly seen the film Beautiful Mind which um, includes um, Russell Crowe I think it is he played the part of John Nash who had the beautiful mind and Nash Equilibrium is a beautiful thing it's a way of finding an equilibrium point in a set of people who are trying to reach some agreement all of them you know possibly lying and where you reach this point and then it's not in anybody's advantage to actually change their strategy so you reach this point where each person involved in the negotiation it might just be two people somebody buying a car somebody selling one 
but you reach this point where it's in no one's advantage to change their strategy once they've declared it. So in buying and selling a car, the guy who's selling the car is probably going to lie. He's probably going to say it's a really good runner, no problems with it. Yeah, it might be a whole bag of rubbish, but you don't know whether it is or not. And similarly, the guy who's buying the car may say, well, my budget is only five grand. Yeah, it might, may be a total lie. Maybe he's got 20 grand he could spend on a car. And each one doesn't know whether the other one is lying or telling the truth. And eventually they reach a point that um, allows them to come to an agreement. So within, I don't know, maybe four or five years, maybe a little bit more, uh, when you deal with various companies, suppliers of various kinds, you will in the main be dealing with AI robots. And these AI robots will be able to lie and cheat just beyond measure. <laughs> and they will figure out whether you are telling the truth or not and they will then propose their own offers and so on. And because people are giving away so much information for free on places like uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and so on, and you must know that this information is being sold to businesses, then these game-playing robots will have information about you and they will know whether you are loaded or whether you're not. And they'll know whether you have a tendency to uh, spend more on gadgets than other people. So the future um, looks like we will have immensely powerful game-playing robots that lie and cheat the, uh, in a way that is just beyond anything we can imagine today. So, welcome to the future. <laughs>